at all. Thank you. Um, and thank you uh, for uh, your patience. I'll just be very brief since we have a motion on the floor. Um, SB 27 uh, would require tax returns five years to be released by the president, vice president, as well as the governor of California for the March 2020 primary election. In every primary election uh, leading into the future related to the president, vice president, and the governor of California when they're on the ballot. Uh, the Secretary of State is in support of this bill. Um, I'm Richard Winger with Ballot, Ac there you go. ballot Access News and also the Libertarian Party. This bill is unconstitutional under both the federal and the state constitutions. When I testified against this bill in the Senate, I hadn't thought about the state constitution. But the state constitution is quite simple. The Secretary of State will put recognized candidates on the ballot in the presidential primary. The Secretary of State does not have unbridled discretion to decide who is recognized. I, I have asked the um, Sergeant at Arms to pass out LaRouche versus you. Has that been done? I don't know, but we'll make sure it gets done. Uh, yep, we're on it right now. Thank you. In 1992, Mrs. Yu kept um, Lyndon LaRouche off the ballot. She didn't think he was recognized, that's the word, and the court disagreed. They said, look, he's on the presidential primary ballot of 21 other states. He's been on the California presidential primary ballot before. He's obviously recognized, and so that's... The Secretary of State just cannot say that President Trump is not a recognized candidate. And I won't go on about the federal constitution, but I'll just say one more thing. There are 15 states where the Democrats have a majority in both houses of the legislature and the governor, and no other one of those states has passed this kind of a bill. Thank you very much. Next witness. Uh, my name is Colleen Britton. Uh, I just have a couple of thoughts. One, this bill appears to be totally politically motivated. It seems to be targeted against a single candidate. Uh, it is aimed at suppressing vote of opposition candidates. It is against every act of transparency and inclusiveness that this committee and this Congress or this legislative body purports to support. So uh, it's beneath you to support this bill. Thank you very much. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Raul Rodriguez, Jr., and I'm here as the California Coordinator for America First Latinos to ask you to vote no on SB 27 because it will disenfranchise California Latinos by unlawfully depriving a protected class from the opportunity to have the liberty and freedom to vote for Donald J. Trump. Furthermore, SB 27 is a poll tax. I'm also here as someone who ran in the last election for Secretary of State. Although I didn't win, I got 380,000 votes. Former Governor Jerry Brown vetoed an identical bill, SB 149, in 2017. We questioned the tactics behind a new ballot qualifying requirement, which is a definition, definition a poll tax because it appears to single out candidates that have a different vision of governing, not to mention it disregards the civil rights of both the candidates and those who are voting. In California, it is against the law to do viewpoint discrimination. We think SB 27 is discrimination because it suddenly requires financial tax filings under the fate reason of more transparency and information, when in reality we live in an era of the Internet where anyone who wants to find out anything generally can. So this feeble attempt to give more information is just smoke and mirrors. And quite frankly, SB 27 smells like a different version of a poll tax. Please vote no on SB 27 for anyone watching this uh, hearing. This phone number is for, 
for reporting civil rights violations to the Department of Justice. And in, finish, in finishing my statement, there are qualifications for the President of the United States. Article 2 of the Constitution, Section 1, Clause 5 of the Constitution says that the President must, number one, be a natural-born citizen, and number two, be at least 35 years of age, and number three, have lived in the United States of America for at least 14 years. Those are the only qualifications for a president. So whatever else is going on in the state of California, this is a blatant discrimination against President Trump. Thank you, sir. Excuse me. Uh, thank you for giving us the latitude for uh, all these presentations. Um, I'm simply going to read from uh, this sheet of paper so that it can be more succinct and, and short, if I may. Uh, my name is Stella May, and I'm here as the director of the Concerned Citizens of California to voice our objections to SB 27 in its attempt to deprive California citizens of the opportunity to vote for a duly qualified presidential candidate absent a new unlawful and fraudulent eligibility qualification beyond that which is prescribed in our Constitution. In 2017, then-Governor Jerry Brown vetoed SB 149, an identical bill warning, quote, what would be next, five years of health records, a certified birth certificate, etc. Deprivation of rights under color of law under 18 U.S.C. Section 242 makes it a crime to willfully deprive a person of a right or privilege protected by the Constitution or U.S. laws and includes acts done by the state officials, the crime of which includes fines or imprisonment or both. Then there's Article 1 of the U.S. Constitution, which specifically prohibits the passing of any form of bills of attainer by both the federal government and the states because they nullify the targeted person's civil rights. In U.S. v. Lovett, SCOTUS opined that Congress had exceeded its power when it enacted legislation that disqualified people from positions of employment, i.e., they created a bill of attainer. In 1965, the U.S. Supreme Court again addressed the Bill of Attainder Clause in U.S. v. Brown, specifically rejected a narrow historical approach and opined to prohibit, quote, legislative punishment of any form or severity, end quote. As specified in U.S. v. Brown and in opposition to the Ninth Circuit Court of Appeals position, SCOTUS held that exclusion from employment is a form of punishment, and therefore SB 27 will certainly deprive any presidential candidate from the opportunity of employment if they don't submit to your new tax return qualifier, thus SB 27 violates civil rights and other laws as well as numerous protections defined within the U.S. Constitution. Now, for the two of you who hold law degrees, presumably you should be aware of the aforementioned laws and protections. The others need to understand that by voting to approve SB 27 today, you personally um, will be violating 18 U.S.C. Section 242 and subject to fines and or imprisonment by voting yes under color of law and authority. So we strongly ask you to vote no on SB 27 um, for all the aforementioned reasons. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, bring it back, uh, excuse me, uh, seeing any additional witnesses in opposition. My name's Greg Allen. I want to vote for Donald P. Trump for president. Thank you, sir. I'll take that as a no on the bill. <laughs> I think the entire nation will see this as an attempt to suppress the conservative vote for all candidates, especially in a state that has a top two tier system. This is absolutely ridiculous, and it makes California look like a rigged state. I'm sorry, but I'm totally opposed against this. Thank you very much. Gina Vela, The Remembrance Project. We the People Rising, Trump 2020, severely oppose. Thank you. Jean McLeod, California citizen. This is not a dictatorship. I oppose this. Thank You're an embarrassment. Thank you very much. In my opinion, you guys have all let Trump derangement syndrome get to your heads. Vote no. Thank you, ma'am. Amen. No. Thank you, ma'am. Tim McMahon strongly opposed. Thank you, sir. 
Patrice Line strongly opposes this unconstitutional. Thank you, ma'am. My name is Mr. Willis. I represent Viejitos for Trump. And I strongly denounce your pathetic attempt to stifle my voice, rob me of my vote, and marginalize me as a citizen. Grow up. And Trump is your president, and he will continue to be your president, buddy. Thank you. And that was outrageous. Sir, sir, I'm going to ask everybody, I'm, I'm going to request that we don't have any displays on any side of any issue in support or opposition, because we want everyone to feel comfortable expressing their opinion in this room. Thank you. If you can please keep it to your name, the organization you represent, and your position on the bill, that would be greatly appreciated. I'm here on behalf of the more than four and a half million Californians who voted for Trump. Don't discriminate us. Vote no to this bill. Thank you very much, ma'am. Bring it back to colleagues for any questions or Yeah, so I very much appreciate the author. We've worked on a lot of different well, things together. You, too. Um, you know, I think the problem here is, look, you're not doing this in a vacuum, you know. Um, and even with adding the governor, like, it... it the context that we're in, there's only one person, only per one president who hasn't released his tax returns, right? And so it looks very political, and it doesn't look like it's an even-handed approach. Um, and I think that's the problem. Like if you if you were doing this in a context where um, you know all all uh, all all candidates had released their tax returns, or all candidates hadn't released their tax returns, that that might be one thing. Um, but we're obviously operating in a context. That's something that is going to get taken into account by a court. Absolutely. Um, I also think, like, we're also in this context of talking about privacy and how important that is and how we don't want, you know, our privacy uh, uh, as, consumers, as consumers. Certainly, we don't want people selling our information without our consent. And I don't think that we give up all sense of privacy as people who are public figures. We don't give up all sense of privacy when we run for office. Um, all of us do file statements of economic interest. So do the federal candidates as well. So everybody can see what they have interests in. Um, but to me, man, my tax returns are nobody else's business, period. And I'm not going to require of somebody else something I wouldn't expect of myself. Um, and certainly I'd, I think a lot of people would have problems up here releasing your private tax returns, um, talking about what deductions you've taken and and you know what you know how much money you've made i mean i to me that's nobody's business um yes presidents have traditionally done that that's a tradition though it's not a legal requirement and then lastly we talk about this a lot in this committee voter suppression this would cause voter suppression if you have look donald trump is going to be the republican uh presidential candidate okay um he's going to be on the ballot if if in march because of this provision, he's not allowed to be on the ballot. It's going to mean that Republican voters have no no reason to turn out, which which affects every down ballot race, um, and is a huge vote. And if it were if the shoe were on the other foot, I think a lot of people would be saying the same thing, because it would suppress Democratic turnout um, as well. And so and, and look, I mean, if to your point, if let's say Joe Biden decides not to release his tax returns, he's not on the ballot. It's going to be a lot of people who would like to show up for Joe Biden who won't um, because they don't have the opportunity to vote for the candidate that they see is, is best for president. So, look, I think we should really look at this in a balanced way and, and, and vote no on this, on this proposal. And in the future, we can talk about you know, what, what should be required of candidates, but I think in this context, it just really looks overly political, and I think it could have a very negative result on voter turnout. In March. Well, I understand there are constitutional concerns uh, with this bill and that it will likely be challenged in court. I believe we should continue to move this bill forward as we'll provide voters with much needed information on the ethical fitness of those running for U.S. president, the highest and most important office in the land. Uh, for these reasons, I'll be voting aye on this bill and recommending support. Madam Secretary, please call the roll. The motion is to pass and be referred to the Appropriations Committee. Berman? Aye. Berman, aye. Gallagher? Calderon, aye. Calderon, I low, low, I maze, maze.